Welcome back to the Jones Zone. And today, I'm going to be presenting the Christian argument pertaining to the Sabbath and why it is that Christians do not observe the Sabbath as our Hebrew Israelite counterparts do. All right, so let me just say that when we're talking about the Sabbath, we're talking about one of the commandments here, specifically the fourth commandment. Now, when we're talking about commandments, we're talking about the Mosaic laws in this case. We're talking about the laws Moses received from God on Mount Sinai, which came in the form of stone tablets and which marks the beginning of what we know as the Old Covenant that's outlined in the Old Testament. And so, the Old Covenant was established between God and the people of Israel. And Jesus hadn't come and died yet. So the believers of God had not yet been forgiven for their sins. And so, while we're under the Old Covenant, people were required to sacrifice animals like goats, cows, and chickens, y'all. Come on now. Another common feature of the Old Covenant was that Israelites couldn't enter the most holy of places, which you would have called the inner sanctuary of the tabernacle. You might have been able to hang around the outer sanctuary, but you couldn't dare enter the dwelling place of Yahweh. Oh, hell no. Only the high priest could do that. Of the likes of like Melchizedek, King Shalim, he could do that. But everyone else, you had to wait outside. And y'all couldn't be nowhere near the Ark of the Covenant, and that's for sure. Now, when Jesus came, he was determined to fulfill the law of the Old Covenant. And Jesus, the Lord, clearly says this in Matthew 5, verse 17 through 19. All right, so Christ says, verse 19, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. They can be interpreted as, Think not that I have come not to destroy the law or the prophets, that I am not come to destroy the but to fulfill. He's not saying like a future or the second coming. He's talking about when he came the first time that he actually came. What he was here to do. 18 he says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So he's saying there that the law, the commandments will not be changed. And in 19 he says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you're not being very careful here. He's saying you're going to go to heaven if you, even if you were to disobey the commandments. But here's the thing. You're going to be at the least is what he's saying there. So you're going to heaven. And so Christians, they are part of the equation here. All right. Now, in verse 17, he's telling you that he's here to simply fulfill that law. He's not here to change it. But it will change once heaven and earth have passed. All right. So that's the end of days kind of thing. That's the beyond, even at beyond heaven. And, and I'll get into that in another video. Okay, so if the old law was the covenant between Israel and the Almighty God, Yahweh, then what is the new covenant? The new covenant is made apparent in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, when Christ tells his disciples after the Last Supper. He says, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Man, that touches my heart so much when he says that, man, because he, he's foreshadowing what's about to happen. And... This is where Christ fulfilled the law when he died on the cross for you, for us, as God's sacrificial lamb. So that right there obsoleted the old covenant, and it activates the new covenant. Not just a covenant for Israelites, but for all believers of Christ. All right, this is not just an Israelite thing. Now, what does this have to do with the Sabbath? I'm going to tell you. Well, let's look at Deuteronomy Chapter 5, verse 15, where it is written, And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Who is he talking to? Who was the servant in Egypt? I'm not from that generation of the line of men who came from Israel, okay? Yeah. 
And then God brought them out of her into the ancient kingdom of Israel. All right, so he's talking to the Israelites. Those who lived in the ancient kingdom of Israel, not the Israelites that we see today in the modern state of Israel. All right, so with that being said, Christ wanted to extend God's mercy, not just to the Israelites, but to all peoples who would believe in him. So this is why Christians do not keep the Sabbath of the Old Testament. It's because the Old Testament, this was Moses' uh, uh, sort of relationship with God and Moses conveying uh, God's commandments to the Israelites at that time. Jesus came after Moses and he's like, okay, we're done with that. What we're going to do now, we're doing a new one. We're not just talking about Israelites and everything. and everything. We're talking about saving all humanity under the new covenant. All right? So that's the difference there. The new covenant was a reformation of the old one. And there's evidence for this in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10 and 11, starting with 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. More context in 11. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with his hands, that is to say, not of this building. So you have a new place of worship that is not literally a tabernacle made of Christ's hands. Maybe it's the church. Maybe it's something that is more all-encompassing that doesn't just apply to the Israeli tabernacles, you see? Yeah, cathedrals and churches didn't exist at that time, so the only way they can really refer to it is being some kind of greater, something more, you know. Just a, just a note there. And yeah, I mean, I know there are so-called Hebrew Israelites who think they're doing everything the right way as God intended, but let me tell you, you can build communities, you can keep the various traditional uh, Israelite practices in the Bible, but if you deny Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior... There is no remissions for your sin. And so you're working according to the old law only to end up in outer darkness. And that's an awful fate for you. Now, had you been born in the kingdom of the ancient Israel before Christ, you wouldn't have to acknowledge Christ. You just keep to the commandments and you'd be all right. But now that we're under the new covenant, Christ, he just cannot go unrecognized. I repeat, under our new covenant, Christ cannot go unrecognized because it is he who died for your sins. And personally, as a Christian, you should try to get baptized too. It ain't nothing but water. I was baptized when I was 15 and it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Because you'll promptly receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And even if you don't realize it at first, it will work through you and within you. And if you don't get it and you still believe in Jesus, you'll still be protected as long as you repent and do your best to keep to the commandments. Because if you don't keep to them, you will end up in heaven, but you'll be in the lowest caste. Which means you'll be serving the people who are in a higher caste than you. You'll have a master, okay? And you, you'll have to serve a master after, after having busted your ass on earth. And trust me, I know there's some of y'all who wouldn't want that. Now, I happen to watch a pastor and... I'm going to just say that he is the pastor at this point in time, and he knows who he is. Let me just say, sir, is that I do see what you're doing, and you definitely have the spirit work within you. That much is certain. And you can tell this when you have enemies and people coming after you. If you weren't in the honest work of saving souls, not that many people would be against you. The real reason they're against you is because they're envious of what you're doing. You're living by the book, and you're God-fearing in the name of Jesus, and that's what's going on. You're actually using the name Jesus and doing this. So this is really going to, the spirits know that true salvation is through Christ. So whether you're a Hebrew Israelite or Christian, you say that name, you work in Jesus' name, you're going to have people coming after you. So it was a bit disappointing when I heard you say that Christians are not a part of the equation. Uh, and with all due respect, I would say you might want to think again on that one. People be getting it twisted on here. 
I may be writing female characters for my stories and playing video games and all of that. But when it comes to God and Jesus, I'll rise up out of this damn chair in a heartbeat and command my voice with the spirit. If I notice something is out of order. Yes, I will. And now there's another Hebrew Israelite I listen to. She's a sister and she sounds very anointed. And yes, you can tell that the Holy Spirit is moving in this woman as well. But the thing with her is that she doesn't mention Jesus very much. Now, let me just say, you're praising Yah, but God is the almighty king of everything. And that's like trying to come to the king sitting in his throne, right, sitting on his throne. He ain't trying to hear you if you don't work through his mediums, his messengers, things like that. He's not, you can't just come and bust up in the throne room and start talking to Yah. All right. In this case, the medium would be Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except through Christ and by his mercy and all knowingness. I think God still hears us. It's just that I think he prefers that we go through the chain of command. You know, now look, you've you got a good heart, but you be letting that racism get to you. You know, we know these Pecker Woods and these Hicks are turning up out here. We all know this. Hell, they know it too. Even the atheistic progressive left, they know this. And there are many of them operating under Satan's kingdom. And yet, even though they're under the kingdom of Satan, they will call out these races as, all the time as much as they can. Alright guys, this video is getting a little longer than I thought it would be. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, head out. You guys have a blessed day.